You're listening to Them Three, a podcast that inspires people to be themselves while living life on purpose, with purpose. We're the McCleskies, two brothers. And a sister. Raised by the same parents, generations apart. When getting spanked was a considered abuse. It should have been. And when riding the bus without seatbelts was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Join us as we inspire siblings like ourselves to have more effective communication within their own family units. You be you. And inspire others to do the same. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. Oh, I thought we started. Well, we started, but we ain't welcome the people yet. Oh. We well, welcome y'all to the podcast. I'm Anastasia McCluskey. <laughs> and I'm Tim Jr., uh, better known as Tim Bone. The eldest. And I am Bill Mc- Billy McCluskey. What's up? Bill Lee. What's up? Now, what yeah. was you going to tell us a story? I, I, my apologies. Oh, so 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 based on what we were just talking about, and I don't know where, where you're going to start this podcast at, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Yes, we're welcoming people in the middle now. But <laughs> but one time I had a uh I was I was about how old was I? 16, 17 years old. And I had a job interview at Target. Did not have a car. How was I gonna get there? Mom, mom's gonna take. I said, Mom, I gotta <laughs> I got an interview at Target. It's at one o'clock. I remember this, y'all. The interview was at one. Okay. <laughs> now, if you know mom, she was challenged at being on time <laughs> to places, right? <laughs> So I should have told her I have an interview at 12. That's what I should have done. But I said, the interview is at one, is at one. And we left the house at one. Oh my God. <laughs> or, or like 12.55. You know what I'm saying? It was like, I was so mad, but I didn't want to express that I was upset right. with mom. So I get to the interview. I'm late. I get to the interview. It's like 1.15, right? I go into Target. Mom's like, I'm going to sit out in the car. Right. I'm like, I go in there. I do the interview. The first thing the lady asked me is, how are you going to get to work on time? <laughs> I'm sitting there like, wow. And I made up some story like, well, I had to wait on my mom. She brought me, but I'm about to get a car. You know, I wasn't about to get no car. <laughs> I just made some up. So I go through the interview. The interview lasted like another three minutes. <laughs> she wasn't about to hire me. She's like, you can't even show up to the interview on time. I'm embarrassed, man. I come out, I get back in the car. Mom said, you done already? <laughs> I'm like, but I didn't, I didn't say anything. I just sat there. I was quiet. And I think she could tell I was upset, right? So then we were driving back and we stopped at a, uh, a strip on Clarksville Highway, which is near our house. And, and I said, where, where are we going? She said, you're going to stop in all these businesses and get an application. I, and I said, uh okay she said listen if that don't work out <laughs> sometimes things don't work out and you gotta go in and, and 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 you know put your bid in put your application in these places so i put in about three four five applications like a little grocery store over there family dollar uh another little clothing place i think it was a, a vcr rental place right there <laughs> and, rental. yeah back in the day now and i ended up getting the job at family dollar and she said, that's better anyway. They pay you more money, which they were, a little bit more money, like 50 cent more <laughs> an hour. And it was closer to the house, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you could so, walk if you needed to. I, exactly. <laughs> or if they had to take me, it wouldn't fall. It right. wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? They had to get on the, the interstate. But to me, that taught me, I think I always reflect back on that uh, story sometimes because it taught me that everything's going to work out. You know what I mean? It's going to work out. It's going to be all right. You know, even if so, sometimes when I am conducting myself in business or in my personal life and I make a mistake and I know it's my fault, just like it was mom's fault. She was late. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it wasn't even like she was coming from another meeting. Like we was at the house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did she ever apologize or say, you know, I'm sorry I got that you, you there? She never said I'm sorry. That was her way of saying I'm sorry. Like, yeah, yeah, that was it. You know, By taking you, she knew. Yeah. But but I feel like now I took that lesson and said it when when I mess up, you know, and I make a mistake, 
I, and I'm, I'm down on, I get down on myself sometimes. Like, man, you, you, you made that mistake. You shouldn't have did that. You should know better, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's going to be all right. It's going to work out, mm-hmm. you know, but you gotta, you gotta keep moving forward. You know, yeah, I still got to put in my applications and keep right. it going. Yeah. So um, that's just one thing I just thought about though, just growing up and, and, and engaging our parents and maybe feeling kind of different, feeling some kind of way about them, but they also taught us those lessons too. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, that. Billy, that you had that that experience because I remember when I came back, one of my first jobs was, and I was when I when I came back from UT, one of my first jobs was at the car wash over there off Twenty First in Broadway. <laughs> oh my gosh! Now I did not know how to do labor work. I, I, just, <laughs> I, I did not know. What did you know how to do? You know, I, well, you I wouldn't cut to, the grass. So I, mean. I knew how to. I knew how to work in an air conditioned building. That's what I knew how to do. <laughs> wow! So I'm out here. You know, you know, this is a car wash, and you know, people are. You know, you you vacuuming out the cars and mm-hmm. you wiping them off. And I I lasted two days. Wow! It was hot. It was in the middle of the summer. I was like, oh, I can't do this. So I walked down the street, probably about. I'm almost a mile, and there was a Wendy's. I went in there, put in an application, got a job the same day. Mm. It felt so good because it was just air conditioning. It was AC in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what was interesting? I don't remember keeping the job because I knew mom and dad, somebody had to take me to work. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a car. What I remember was getting an application down at the quick sack right down mm-hmm. the street from the house, across from where the CVS pharmacy used to be. And they, they couldn't always take me to work. I worked from three to 11, three to close. Mm-hmm. So they ain't home. So how you gonna get to work? Mm-hmm. So at first I walked mm-hmm. to work. And then Stacy, I'm so grateful for you, honey. But for some reason, there was a bike that you had. They said it was your bike. <laughs> it, it, was, it had tassels, but okay. <laughs> Oh, I man. rode the bike to work. God, I'm so grateful for you. I right. Mean, you could have <laughs> got you a little ding dong bike from the thrift store. I uh, rode the bike. I thought it was my bike. Well, mom said it was yours, but I, I thought it was mine. But I, I rode, I remember riding the bike and, and closing and working down at the quick sack. But I, I bring that up because I had to think about how was I going to get to work? Mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't assume they were always going to be available. I had to start doing some things on my own. And eventually what dad did is that they ended up driving down when uh, grandma had it, mom's mom and dad moved up and they just gave me granddad Lee's car and I was able to run. But I had to. You destroyed that. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't try to wreck the car. I, I was driving I on the interstate and hydroplane into a wall. Woo! But oh, how fast goodness. were you driving? And did oh, you I wouldn't drive the fast. Water? No, 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 I wouldn't drive fast at all. Um, oh, no, 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 it's the water. water. <laughs> because when I hydroplane, thankfully, I bounced off the rail mm-hmm. and I, it's like I bounced back into the lane and I kept on driving and went on to where I was going. Oh, that car kept driving. For, yeah. For, oh, the, the car, dro- I drove that car a long time. You Rent. did. I was so sad. I wanted that. That was a beautiful car. It was. I don't even know what car. kind of car it was. Um, it was an old Cutlass. Mm. Four door, oh, I learned how to change, you know, spark plugs. I put in belts. I change. I learned how to change uh, and put on brakes on this car. I mean, you know, it wasn't no YouTube. Wow. You had That's to get. Deep. You had to get one of those thick books that they sold at AutoZone, mm. and you had to figure it out. And they would give you the parts, and you know, they showed you step by step how to do. What, it. What's this? What's this podcast about? This podcast <laughs> is supposed to be about. <laughs> Not this, but this is a great conversation. And thank God for YouTube. I mean, it, it, it's a great conversation. Um, it's we were supposed to be talking about uh, d- divorce and uh, breakup. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we, we probably won't get to that today. Oh, about that. We know that. But this is great. Um, you, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I, I have no idea what I'm getting ready to say. So, wow. <laughs> Did you ever have a job? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Did I ever have a job? I did not have a job. Well, I, I take that back. I, you know, for a long time, I wanted to get a job. And dad would always say to me, um, your job is going to school. 
-hmm. And I, you know, it goes back to what you were saying, Tim, of you felt like you had to be a certain way. I remember dad would always tell me, you need to study three hours a night. That, that didn't work for my brain. I, yeah. me sitting down yeah. for three hours to study something would, I would end up doing this. <laughs> and I don't know where that's that not how I learned. That's not yeah. how I'm, I'm a visual yeah. learner. I, yeah. I, I also don't, I can memorize things very fast. So if I need to, and I don't know if that's from uh, just the habit of being so last minute that I have to, I'm forced to, or if it's because I'm an actor now, but even when I was younger, I could memorize things fast. So for a test, I could study something real quick the morning of, and then go take the test. But I would still remember it because I think his whole thing was, you're not retaining it after. And I was like, but I am, this is my process. But I think it goes back to communication and listening to your children sometimes. Parents um, sometimes think, well, my way is better because I've lived, but I'm trying to tell you how my brain works. And because you are not in my brain, you're not understanding how it works. You're only understanding from a point of experience in your right, life. Right. And so um, for me, it was really breaking down the visual. And that's how I started to learn. And, you know, having mom as an educator, she helped out a lot with that, too, um, especially working with early childhood children, because you can learn when a child is young mm -hmm. how they how they learn, how mm -hmm. they understand mm -hmm. things. Um. Um, but no, I didn't have a job um, for a long time. And I, then I think in maybe sophomore, junior in high school, I got a job at Shampoo Perry, the hairdresser right there. Um, Shampoo Perry. Mm -hmm, off Jefferson. And um, I think I would sweep and answer the phones. I think I worked at Dr. June Noyne's office, who's the dentist. Y'all mm -hmm. remember her? I would file stuff. And I remember working. I didn't like working at the dentist. It was too regulated. It was too mm -hmm. structured. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I always say uh, I work very well in organized chaos. Mm -hmm. That's my comfort zone. I, I work very, I can like zone in and do what I need to do. Uh, much like when I read, I have to have on music and maybe the TV because then I can focus in on a book. I can read a book in like three hours. Um, but that's a just how my children's book. Pretty much. <laughs> that, that's amazing. I'm glad you said that because, and I'm Billy, I don't know how you do it, but I remember when I went back to college at, at TSU, I said, well, I'm going to go to the library and study. Oh my gosh. It was so quiet. It was too loud. I yeah. couldn't, I could not concentrate. I mean, my brain could not focus. So Because I it was to have, too quiet? It was too quiet. Okay. Way okay. too quiet. So I have to be like, I like how you put it, Stacey, organized chaos. You know, I, I would go into the, the, the UC in the cab and I would just, it's mm -hmm. people all around doing our own mm -hmm. thing, but I was relaxed in that environment. Mm -hmm. um, I could, when I'm at home, when I'm working, I gotta have, you know, I'll have on some music or something and, and it's relaxing music. It's like solo piano music or some jazz or something, mm -hmm. but I'm relaxed when I'm able to hear something. If it's too quiet, um, I remember this happened the other day. Deborah was like, no, I said to her, Rowan is at his mom's. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it is too quiet. Here. We're going to do something. It's, yeah. I, you know, there are moments when I like the peace and quiet. But yeah. for me to, to focus and work on some things, it's amazing how our minds work that way. I like well, going I to the mall and just reading the book. I think it goes back to also growing up, you know, our house, it wasn't loud, but it wasn't quiet. There was always mm -hmm. a TV on somewhere, yeah, some true. music playing, people talking. Well, um, mom, mom was talking to Myrtle laughing. On the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it, there was noise. And I think that it, even in our community, you know, you go to our friends' houses growing up, mm -hmm. that's how their families function. We, we learned and function and thrived in sound and noise. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's that, I, that whole three hours of sitting in your room mm -mm, <laughs> didn't work for me. But well, um, I, well it, did, it did work for me. Um, and I think I'm, I can go. <laughs> I, a, yeah, I think I can go both ways, though. I mean, I, I can operate in, 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 in solitude and quietness uh, or I was able to study like that. I really was, you know. Um, but I'm also able to do it in organized chaos, too. I mean, um, so I, I think, I guess I'm weird like that. And it doesn't matter to me I'm, because yeah. I remember <clears throat> when I was in high school, 
I had to, I did spend a lot of time in quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I was in college, I used to, stu I remember studying anywhere, right? I mean, I could be at a friend's house studying. I could be um, at work. You know, I used to work at the bookstore, a cable line, shout out to our cable line images or, or whatever and, and studying there. But, um, and sometimes I, you know, I was, I was, I was weird in college. I would copy my textbook. I would copy a chapter on a copy machine in the textbook and I would just take it with me everywhere. So I'd be in line at Wendy's, you know, reading stuff. <laughs> you oh, know wow. what I'm saying? Yeah. You because were dedicated I, too. Well, I just didn't want to haul around the textbook, but so yeah. it was easier to carry around the chapter. But I mean, you know, so I, I think that, uh, and one thing that I started doing in college that I learned in high school, you know, talking about that three hours, you know, the, the, the key that I learned, the trick or hack is what we call it now, was to study 20 minutes every day for each subject. Uh, and basically a review, do a review of the class. So after the class, I would study 20 minutes of mm -hmm. what we just went over in the class. And, and what I learned is by the time midterm or finals came, I never had to study. I never had to study for the big test because I was doing a little bit every day. And I just mm -hmm. review, 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 review. And all of a sudden we got the test and I'm like, well, shoot, I've been studying every day. But it wasn't three hours, you know. So, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, in college, you only got two or three classes a day, uh, maybe. So it, it was maybe an hour. But I think you need to say that you, you, you have to you have to. People need to know those kinds of things because that worked really well for you. I've mm -hmm. learned that my son has a different way of, of learning mm -hmm. and I can't make him just sit down for an hour mm -hmm. and do some work. That ain't mm -hmm. gonna work for his brain. Um, I have to reward him. Well, you know? so, okay. so let, me, let me say this though, because I think that it's a thin line so, so we have to be careful because that's just like, just, you see that line right there? <laughs> and, and I, and I, I don't, I don't like cutting, cutting you off. So I'm going to get back to you, but I, I just want to be careful because it's just like somebody saying, um, I'm not a runner. You know, I don't, I can't run. I don't run. I don't run a mile. I don't run five miles. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's just a belief system. Because what, what I noticed is, okay, my wife, not on time and stuff, right? However, when it is a, a, a one of her friend's weddings, or if it's a party, <laughs> if it's a concert, <laughs> we on time, right? <laughs> Church? <laughs> nah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Most of the time, you know what I'm saying? We late. Uh, or <laughs> you putting this all on Kim though? I know. No, 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 no he married his mama. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that, exactly. So I'm just saying here's another example. Miles, my son, or like you said, Rowan, uh, your son, he can't sit down for an hour and, and, and study or focus on something, but he can play a video game for an hour. So maybe it's the the approach to studying that we're talking about. It's not that he can't focus on something for an hour. Right. It's, it's that the 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 method methodology or the strategy in terms of how we're retaining or getting the information. So maybe it needs to be more engaging. Maybe it needs to be interactive. Uh, maybe it needs to be auditory or kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we talk about like now in the professional world, we take these like disc assessments or personality assessments to figure yeah. out what are our strengths and how do we learn and how do we progress but, you know, I, I just, I just, you know, wanted to throw that out there. No, I appreciate you saying that because I was going to say with, with Rowan, I have learned when I have him come, so, so they're doing virtual learning now, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I leave him to his own devices, he, he, he in class, but he ain't in class. Mm -hmm. You know, his brain ain't there. Um, but if I have him come down and sit on the sofa here in my office, and he's in class, he's engaged. Mm. Now, it's not because I'm lording over him. Mm -hmm. What I realized is his, he needs to be around his dad. Mm. He mm. wants to be around his dad. And when you're able to help him and ask him questions, he will be more, he's more engaged. He had to, um, work on a, a, a Spanish 
homework or something. And I was working and Deborah was helping him. They had to do it three times because, you know, he, he thought it one way and then Deborah did it one way and they realized they were wrong. And because she was there with him, helping him, engaging with him, she was expecting him to kind of pout off. But she said he just went like, oh, OK, sure. and he went back right back and did it. I've learned that Rowan, he, he needs a support system. Where does that come from? Some things that, that have transpired in his life mm -hmm. that made him feel like he needs nurturing mm -hmm. as a process of him learning. Mm -hmm. And when he gets that nurturing, sometimes he could be at the table and we, I could be sitting on the sofa reading. TV can't be on. But if I'm in, if we're in prox close proximity with him and he can see us, he does what he has to do. I've just noticed that about his behavior. Mm -hmm. But I had to pay attention mm -hmm. to those things about his behavior. So I think as parents, we have to decide, you know, we know our kid, if we pay attention, we know our kids' strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll tell Rowan, okay, you got to get these paragraphs done. And they got to be right. You got to have at least eight or nine minimum words in each sentence. And they can't all start with I. You know, I had, I had to pay attention to how he does work to get done versus doing it to be effective so he's learning. And then I have to you know his love language and say, okay, he needs words of affirmation. Mm. I have to tell him, okay, great. That was a great one sentence. You only got eight more. This is awesome. Right. You know, and you didn't use I. Now, to some people, like, I ain't got time to do that, but this ain't about the, 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 the little test right. or the little homework assignment. Right. This is development yeah. for their mental and emotional development. Because yeah. if we don't give it to them, they're going to go, he's going to look for some nanny panty girl to try to give him some kind of sense of self-worth. Yeah. And then we got a blown up cycle. All yeah. because I ain't had time. Yeah. So. Well, and I think, I think you hit on something, love language, you know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I didn't learn about love languages until <laughs> probably my late twenties and what they were and exp how you receive love is different than how you give love. But I think in any type of relationship, whether it's, you know, parent and child, whether it's a romantic relationship, a friendship, siblings we have to understand each other's love language because we could be communicating with each other and not understanding that that person doesn't, they can't hear us or receive it because that's not how they receive love. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's, I think that's really beautiful. Cause I don't, I don't, I, I wonder if a lot of parents think about that. Like you said, they probably like, I don't have time to, to think about this child's love language. I need them to get this work done and go to bed and get out of my face. And it's like, but wait a minute. They didn't did did you, so. Tim? Did you uh, did did you get Rowan to take a love language test for like uh, kids for children? I have not had him take the test. Um, Deborah okay. and I, my wife, have done it in different at different times so many mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. that I paid attention to what he's receptive to. Okay, um, and then I also paid attention to some things that have transpired in his past. And he has to feel like he has value. Mm -hmm. And he, he receives that when it's coming from a hug or, oh, you did a great job. This is so good. I love how you do. And he's just, his body language changes. Um, and I've noticed that about him. My wife is real keen on saying, you need to make sure that you go, go up and read with him before he goes to bed. Make sure you pray with him before he goes to bed. Do these different things. And these are things that help him to develop. Um, I can go up and I notice this. We pray every night before we go to bed. I pray with my wife and I pray with my son. And sometimes it's separate because he's upstairs. This is something I noticed about them both. The moment I start the prayer they yawn. Mm -hmm. They're getting into a mode of comfort and security and relaxing their mind and their body because I'm present in the moment. And what I'm learning is you have to not just be there. You have to be present intentionally. Mm. Otherwise, what's the point? Mm. 
And sometimes I think people, <clears throat> particularly men, think I, I go to work, um, I, I pay the bills, I'm here. No, 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 no. You, 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 you have to pay attention. And it's a process, it's a constant, because we're always changing and learning and growing and developing. And so things are always moving, but you have to pay attention to those moving parts and then have conversations when you don't understand something so you can get proper direction. Yeah. Ooh. But that's just my experience. What did you say, Stacey? I said, whew. I mean, a lot of, a lot of and I, I want to say, I want to say it's generational. I also want to say that I think it's, you know, within the black and brown community, I think it's, it's still, it's still trickled down to even like millennials and <clears throat> younger people who have kids um, because they haven't been allowed. I mean, talk about breaking generational curses or, or generational traumas or triggers. It's like on an emotional level, a lot of people haven't been allowed to be emotional or to develop that side of themselves because it, it wasn't engaged with them as they were coming up as children. You know, just speaking, I think about mom and dad's generation and, you know, men were taught that they had to go out and get a job and take care. If you're going to have a family, take care. You can't cry. And, you know, and it's like, what? That is the, the, the saddest thing ever, because you are shutting down a part of yourself that is completely natural mm-hmm. to abide by some Western type of patriarchal system. Right. Um, and then you think about your generation, Tim, you know, you talked about last week how dad hid your lion because it's like my son shouldn't have a stuffed animal what it it it, may, it makes no logical sense when you really sit down and think about it because what is the fear in your child crying or having a stuffed animal and being a child you know what what is that fear that comes from some something that was taught long ago that makes no sense now mm-hmm. um, i do think in our community specifically black communities and other people of color um there's still that remnants of people just have not developed emotionally and they are stuck. Mm -hmm. So what you have is a lot of people walking around really sad and feeling lost and unaware. My therapist asked me today, she's, oh, well, she was saying, she's talking about another client and she was saying, you know, uh, some of my clients haven't taken a deep breath in a Mm -hmm. long time. And they take, cause she does a lot of breath work before we start our sessions. And it's just simply taking the deep breath in for four, holding it for seven and releasing it for eight. And how that slows down your heart rate, how you're able to then just sit there and actually em- emotionally just throw up. And some, some people have never done that mm-hmm. because they've never been given the platform or the opportunity or the safe space. You know, like you speak of Tim, to do that, to say, here I am. And it's okay for me to say, I love you. Something that simple. You know, I have a lot of friends who specifically their fathers have never hugged them. Hmm. That is crazy to me. But humans need physical. If we didn't learn one thing last year, we learned that humans need physical touch. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people didn't get to hug someone for a long time. You need that, especially from someone who, you know, is saying to you unconditionally, I love you, or it, society says this person is supposed to love you unconditionally, you know? Um, and so a lot of people are walking around emotionally immature. And because of that, they're lacking in other places in their lives. Um, but I think, I think breath work, you know, is important too, just to sit and breathe. Because mm-hmm. uh, you never know what might come up. There are a lot of things that we're all dealing with that we kind of just support. <clears throat> Right. You know, you know, I was doing this thing when, uh, you know, when I run, I listen to music or a podcast or something. And uh, I just ran uh, today and <laughs> my phone was my phone died. OK, <laughs> so I was I was running and all of a sudden I'm not hearing anything. I'm like, what's going on? And then I just realized I pulled my phone. Out. I was like, oh, my phone died. And I had probably about 15 more minutes to run. I was like, all right, let's go. And when I started to run and just, I would hear my footsteps in the snow. Doom, 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 doom. And then I started listening to my breathing. One, two. It was so beautiful, you know? And then I started talking to God, you know? And then I just started listening to my breathing again, you know? And I think you're right. I mean, a lot of people are not sitting with themselves and just listening, taking a deep breath and just sitting with themselves, you know? 
and being silent uh, because either we're afraid or we don't see the value in it. Mm-hmm. And, and for us, you know, it's like, you know, who are you? That's how you find out who you are, in my opinion. That's how you find, find, how you find out who you are. Um, so, so anyway, I mean, I, I just, I just think it's really key. Um, but my, my other point to that was I'm listening to music or a podcast or something. And maybe sometimes I should just be listening to my breathing. Mm. Maybe, maybe sometimes I should just run with myself <laughs> or like somebody called it running with God. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes I just should, should be, it should be me and God out here. Right. And that's what meditation is all about too. You know, just sit and be mm-hmm. still, be still and know that I'm God. Right. But, but, it, but I know that, but, but, but as people, sometimes we, we find everything else to distract us oh, from yes. that. You know what I mean? Because it may be too uncomfortable. Maybe I don't want to be with my thoughts. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to, you know, listen to myself or be with myself. Maybe I don't like myself. You know, I don't know who I am. I don't I don't have a a true identity, but maybe that's too much work for me. Right. (laughs) And and so I'm just going to listen to this music. I'm just going to jump on Instagram. I'm just Mm -hmm. going uh, I'm going to I'm going to find me a a, a spouse, you know, and I'm I'm going to date somebody and just cover all that up. And uh, so so I think it's key. We strip everything away, strip it all away. And uh, and there it is. There you have it. What you going to do? Oh, what you going to do? That's amazing. That's what, so what, what do we have as takeaways at four o'clock? <laughs> Tim said he's done. For the- <laughs> hey, started at three. We started up at the bottom. Now we're here. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think. I, I think I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just <laughs> messing with you. Make I'm your child like- make your child take the uh, disc assessment. Uh, no, the love language test. Love language test. You no, know, you can you can take the love language test uh, online. It's for free. Yeah, yeah, you can do it for free, I believe. Yeah, yeah you can wow. Google it, and you can probably Google that they have one for children. So you can Google probably they that. But I'm not. Yeah, but you, yeah. but you know what? Too, I think I think adults need to 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 take it because sometimes, you know, people think they know what their mates want, and they and and they they give their mates what they want. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. Um, yeah. You know, like you people think, well, it's Valentine's Day, so <laughs> I'm supposed to go buy jewelry. I'm supposed to go do this, 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 because that's what society says you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, my wife don't care about all that stuff. Yeah. And but what she cares about is time. Mm. Right. She would prefer being out in nature. Well, we couldn't be out in nature. So we just did something right here in the house. We just bought some food and just we cooked. We got dressed up and cooked in the house. And just enjoy time. We created memories. We were talking about it today. Mm-hmm. You know, so but but you gotta know your your you gotta your know their love language. language. Yeah, you you have to know what they need, and then you have to communicate, talk about it. Talk about it. Don't be afraid. And you Billy, you alluded to it. You you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable because then if you're wrong about some stuff, you need to know that on the front end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Instead of just continuing yep. to perpetuate the wrong stuff. Right. Because you're too scared to know what the truth is. Come and it's on. not always bad if you're wrong. Just right. know you all and exactly. figure out how to make the adjustment. Accountability. Mm-hmm. Accountability. You know, be vulnerable enough to then hold yourself accountable. As well. mm. When you are wrong, you know, that's that's a big one. That's a big one. You know, one. it's amazing. The Bible says the truth will make you free and mm-hmm. you will be free indeed. Mm-hmm. When you know the truth, you you like... Oh, that was okay. Mm-hmm. Now, now you have nothing holding you. Mm-hmm. That, that stronghold is gone. It has no no Lord over you anymore. Mm-hmm. Once you allow that, that truth to come out. So there's a website called five lovelanguages.com, the number five lovelanguages.com. And they do have a quiz for adults and children. So uh yeah, you could you could get your child and take that quiz. And find out what their love language is and do it with your spouse as well. What are uh, y'all's love it, languages? Uh, mine is quality time. Yeah, yeah, do you have is, another one? Do you have, you know, you can have two. You have a close one to, to quality time? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> so mine is quality time and physical touch. Yeah, and, mine is. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Say it. 
And that's how you receive love, quality time. Right. Flesh, quality yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and how do you give love? Well, I have to know my, my wife's is, uh, hers is quality time and acts of service, but it kind of meshes with uh, physical touch too. So it's like, it's so cool because we kind of interchange. Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Words, yours Sorry. Are, that's another that, one. That's the second one. Really? Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that, Billy. Okay. I didn't know that either. I, I never, no. I don't. Yeah. And that's how y'all receive love from. That's how we receive any, love. Yeah. Anyone. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's, what's yours? Mine, mine um, are uh, acts of service and uh, quality time. Quality, quality time, time leads to physical touch if that's, you know, your thing. And so, you know, but acts of service yeah, is like yeah. my main one. Yeah, I was surprised when uh, Kim and I took this uh, test quiz. Her, I thought hers was uh, gifts or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> Cause she got a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? But hers was really? actually quality time. Really? Because she, she can buy all the stuff she wants. But That's but true. you know, but you know, because I and I told her this before, and this is true with everybody, probably. <laughs> you know, you you can buy something and it's gonna make you happy today, but in a year, you're not gonna even you ain't gonna even care. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so the but the quality time. Mm-hmm. is what is fulfilling and, and long lasting, you know? So, but anyway, um, yeah, yeah. I, I was surprised when I found out that about Kim. So it's, it's important, I think, to take the test because you may, you may be surprised. Pleasantly. What do you think Mousy is, if you had to guess, based on just your understanding of the I, I would think, I would think words of affirmation. I'll say that, yeah. Yep, yep. Cause I noticed, uh, you know, talking about our engagement with our parents, I noticed, when I was growing up, if my if mom or dad told me they were proud of me, man, that just took me out, bro. I was just like, "Woo, my parents proud of me." Mm. So, and I noticed the same thing with Miles. If I say I'm proud of you, he'll start blushing. He'd be like, Aww. "You know what I'm saying?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I think it's I, I would I would say, but I'm gonna get him to take this um, this quiz. But I, I would say words of affirmation. Yeah, that, I'd say the same with 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 Rowan. He's just, uh, you know, he, he and he tries to hold it in. He put his head down, or he'll grin, you know. Mm-hmm. But he, but quality time mm-hmm. is, is 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 right along the line with that. Um, you know, we'll do the, the 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 oddest things in this house. Now we'll play ping pong mm-hmm. in the house, and when he's getting ready to leave to go to his his mom's, it's like. That those last hour or two hours, he's trying to do something mm-hmm. that's engaging. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's that quality time. He wants to get that last little bit in before he leaves. And he's going to have quality time with his mom, but just with us, because he's, no, he's going to be gone for a day or two. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's being aware of that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's being aware. Um, yeah. What what is uh, flowers love language, Stacy? Oh God, quality time and physical touch. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that one. Uh, she's she's literally right here. Anytime <laughs> I'm I'm in this little workspace that I've created in my house, she is right beside me, and it's physical touch. If I'm sitting on the couch with her and she's right on me, I'm like uh, I'll move over a touch, and she will slowly inch her way back towards me. Hmm. Yeah. But I think that's a lot of dogs. They just, they need to be near their person. Yeah. That's, that's what you're calling, that they're a person. They're a person. <laughs> they're, they're human. They're I human, think an, yeah. an, another takeaway is, you know, encouraging people to breathe, do breath work. Mm, yes. What, and, and encouraging not to not breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, genuinely <laughs> taking that t- time and holding space for right. themselves uh, to just take some, de- and honor you know, last week we talked about inner child, but honor the things that have hurt you, especially when it comes to your family, whether it's your partner, whether it's a parent, a sibling, and, and being okay and saying, saying to that person, something you said hurt my feelings, and this is why. And being open to having that dialogue. But I think it does start with the breath work because then you can stop yourself, dissect it, and then move forward because you got to keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. That's hey, that's enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you yeah. if you work on if you're being you're intentional about working on your breathing, especially first thing in the morning, breathe. Mm. Um, 
and and also uh, take this. Go to fivelovelanguages.com and, and take that test. And if you're taking it, take it again, um, because you know things change. Thanks. You know we 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 all change as we continue to live, and sometimes you know your desires and things that are important to you change. I mean the world has changed. We're in COVID. Yep. We're in COVID world, yep. and we've been in the house for a week now because of the snow. You know, so so your mindset changes just because of the circumstances. So you have to be prepared to have that conversation with your significant other. Yeah. You don't make not unnecessary mistakes. Cool. Well, hey, this uh, podcast is brought to you by FedUpGroup.com. Fed up. Yeah, yo. Showing you how to get out of debt with the money you already have. AnastasiaMcCluskey.com. And The Grind Includes Friday. Dot com. Yeah, com. Go on and get it. Uh, and that's for entrepreneurs and salespeople. So, uh, hey, y'all. Appreciate y'all tuning in. And we'll see y'all next week. Holla. Hey. Oh, that was so sweet. Uh. <laughs>